Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from AmandaCrochets.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this cluster hot pad. The cluster hot pad is a double thick hot pad meaning that we are going to make two panels of this stitch and we're going to sew them together so it's extra nice and thick. And then I just put a nice pico border on the edge of it and I thought it turned out really nice and I really like how this stitch came out. So for the cluster hot pad I ended up making this an 8 by 8 inch hot pad. You can always make this bigger if you would like to and I just really liked how thick and chunky it came out and I thought it would be perfect to add to your kitchen or give away as housewarming gifts or anything like that. Maybe you have a craft fair coming up you can definitely use this pattern to make a bunch of these and put them together as a little set and sell them at your next craft fair. So let's get started with today's tutorial on how to make the cluster hot pad. So for today's tutorial you're going to need you're going to need a size H or 5 millimeter crochet hook and you're also going to need some cotton yarn. I am just using the Hobby Lobby I Love This Yarn and you're going to need about two skeins and this is 100% cotton and it is considered a four worsted weight yarn. And it is 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. It's 180 yards or 165 meters. And the color I'm using is pewter. You can use whatever color that you would like as well as any cotton yarn that you would like. So to begin your hot pad, you're going to go ahead and make a chain of 20 Eight. So to make a chain, you're going to yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, Continue making chains until you have a total of 28 chains. Okay, once you have your 28 chains, we will begin row one. So if you want to alter this pattern and make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, as long as you have an even number of chains, you should be good to go. So I have 28 chains, and if you want to make this bigger or smaller, just make sure that your chain is a is an even number. So for row one we're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from your hook. So the loop on your hook does not count. You're going to count two chains from your hook. So one and two. And in that second chain from your hook you're going to make a single crochet. So you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, and that is your single crochet. Next you're going to insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Again, insert your hook into that very next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. So you're going to make one single crochet in each of the chains across and if you are following my pattern you will have a total of 27 single crochet stitches. So make one single crochet in each stitch across and I will meet up with you and show you how to continue making row two. So once you finish your first row of single crochets, we're going to move on to the second row. So for the second row, you're going to chain up two, 
one, and two, and turn your work. Now the chain two is going to count as your first double crochet. So next we're going to begin our cluster stitches. So in order to do the cluster stitch, you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook into that very first stitch. So again, you have your chain two, which counts as your double crochet. So you're going to be working in this stitch right here. So insert your, your stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you're going to have three loops on your hook. Next, you're going to yarn over and insert your hook back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. And now you're going to have five loops on your hook. So one, two, three, four, and five. Next, you're going to yarn over your hook. You're going to skip this next stitch right here. And in the stitch after that, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. seven loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, insert your hook back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have a total of nine loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And when you have nine loops on your hook, you want to yarn over your hook and pull through all nine loops. Now in order to secure this, we're going to go ahead and yarn over and pull through. And that's just a chain after. And that is how you make your cluster stitch. Next we're going to make another cluster stitch. So you're going to yarn over and in that very same stitch that you just finished with, you're going to start your next cluster. So again, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. And you want to make sure you try and keep all of your loops the same height. Yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch again, yarn over, pull up a loop and you should have five loops. Yarn over, you're going to skip this next stitch, and in the stitch after that you're going to finish your cluster. So again, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, seven loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and now you should have a total of nine stitches. I mean nine loops. And once you have nine loops, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all nine loops on your hook. And then to finish your stitch, you're going to yarn over and make a chain. So you're going to continue this all the way across until you have one more stitch left and I will show you how to finish the row but let me show you one more time how to make this cluster stitch so again yarn over your hook and in that same stitch that you just finished your previous cluster you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull up uh, insert your hook yarn over pull up another loop five loops on your hook Yarn over, skip that next stitch, and stitch after that, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, seven loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, pull up a loop, nine loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all nine loops. 
and then make a chain one after. So continue making your cluster stitches and when we get to the end of the row I will show you how to finish this row as well as move on to row three of your pattern. So again continue making your cluster stitches across and I will meet up with you at the end of row two. So I'm coming up on my last cluster stitch. You're going to skip this next stitch and in that very last stitch which it might be a little bit difficult to hold but just try your best and you're going to finish your cluster stitch in that very last stitch. Okay, and then to end the row we're going to make one double crochet in that same space as the last cluster. So this space right here. So you're just going to go ahead and make a double crochet. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And this is what your second row looks like. Now you should have a total of 13 cluster stitches if you are following the same exact pattern that I am. Obviously if you make your hot pad bigger or smaller you're going to have more or less cluster stitches. But if you follow the exact same chain and the pattern that I am doing then you will have a total of 13 clusters. Okay, so for row three, we're going to chain up two and turn. And again, that chain two is going to count as your first double crochet. We're going to start our cluster stitch in the same stitch. So for the purposes of this, instead of going in the top of that stitch, we're going to go in that space. So the space is going to be right here. So we're going to go right underneath and we're going to go in that space right next to it. And we're going to begin our cluster just like that. Now we're going to skip that middle stitch which is going to be right here and you're going to go right next to that cluster and instead of going in the top of that stitch you're going to go in that space underneath. So basically you're going to go in the spaces next to the stitches. And then you're going to finish your cluster stitch that way. Now when you make your cluster stitches this way, they're going to sit right on top of one another. And that's exactly what you want. So again, for your next cluster stitch, you're going to go in that same space right here. And you're going to work. And then you're going to go into that space next to it. So you're going to skip this cluster stitch right here. And you're going to find that next space, which is going to be right here. And you're going to finish your cluster stitch that way. So again, your cluster stitches are going to sit right on top of one another. So I'll show you one more time in slow motion. You're going to yarn over. You're going to go in that same space. Yarn over. Pull up a loop. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Insert your hook into that same space. Yarn over. Pull up a loop, five loops on your hook, yarn over, you're going to skip that puff stitch or that cluster stitch, and you're going to find that next space, and you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, seven loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook into that same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
nine loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all nine loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through for chain one. So you're going to repeat this all the way down, and then at the very end you're going to add one more double crochet to the very end. So just continue your, your cluster stitches and finish up row three, and I will show you how to finish row three and move on to the next row. Okay, so I'm at the end of row three, and I just made my last cluster stitch, and again in that last space, you're going to make a double crochet. So here is what three rows look like, and as I mentioned, again, the cluster stitches are going to sit right on top of one another. Okay, so for my hot pad, I ended up making 14 rows in total, and again, after each row, you should have a total of 13 cluster stitches. Again, if you make this bigger or smaller, you're going to have a different amount of cluster stitches but you should have a total of 14 rows if you are following my pattern. So go ahead and make 14 rows total, cut your yarn, and then you're gonna make another one of these hot pads in the exact same size. So you can always refer back to my video by just rewinding and starting all over again. And you're gonna make two of these all together. And then once we have two of them, we will go ahead and sew them both together and complete our border for the hot pad. So repeat row three over and over again until you have a total of 14 rows and then you're going to make one more identical square and then we're going to sew them together to form our hot pad. So I, I will meet up with you at the very end and I will show you the border portion of the hot pad. Okay so once you have both of your squares ready this is what they should look like. Now I chose to weave in my ends, however if you want to just tuck them inside your hot pad when you sew them together, you can do that as well. But you're going to basically put them right on top of one another and you're going to sew them together. Now in order to figure out what is the top, your clusters are going to look like little V's. So this is the correct way. Now if they're upside down, they would look like this where the cluster starts at the top and they would look like that. So the cluster portion should be to pointed towards the bottom. So you're just going to match them up and you're going to get your yarn and in the top right hand corner you're going to go into that very first stitch of each hot pad and you're going to get your yarn and I leave a little bit of a tail and all you're going to do is just sew that together. So you're just going to bring the yarn through And then you're going to go ahead and chain one. And you're just going to make a single crochet in each of the chains across. And you're going to go through both sides of that hot pad. So in that very first stitch, you're going to insert your hook on both sides of your hot pad, yarn over, pull up a loop, again you have two loops in your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. So you're just going to find the same stitches on either side of your hot pad, and you're going to just make one single crochet across the top of your hot pad. 
and just take your time with this as it might be a little bit difficult with the thickness of both hot pads. But just continue making one single crochet across the top of your hot pad and then when you get to your first corner I will show you how to make a corner as well as go down this side of your hot pad. So again one single crochet in each of these stitches across the top of your hot pad. Okay so I'm getting to my first corner so for your corner stitch you're going to make three single crochets all in that corner space and this is just to help round out that corner okay so then you're going to turn your work and we're going to be working down the side of our hot pad now for the hot pad you're just going to try your best and you're going to make one single crochet all the way down in each of the spaces. So again you're just going to find the coordinating stitches across. And then what I like to do, because you have that double crochet, you're going to make two in that double crochet, or around that double crochet. So make two single crochets around the post of that double crochet. And then you will just continue this all the way down. And then when you get to that next corner, you'll make three single crochets into that corner, one single crochet in each of the stitches along the bottom, and then when you get to that next corner, again three single crochets in that next corner, and then one single crochet along the other side of your hot pad. So just continue doing this one single crochet all the way around your entire hot pad and in each corner you will get you will make three single crochets and when you get to that last corner I will show you how to finish up that last corner and finish the last round of our border which is going to be the pico stitch okay so when you get to the very end this is where you started out. So you started out with that one single crochet in the very first stitch. So to finish this corner, you're going to finish with two single crochets. And then that way you have a total of three. Okay, so you have one and two and then you have the third one which is right here and you're just going to go ahead and slip stitch that together so here is what the two look like together and it forms that double thick hot pad okay so now for the final border which is the pico border we are going to make a chain three. So one, two, and three. And then you're gonna insert your hook into that first bar of the first chain made. So that first bar, which is gonna be right here. And then you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through everything on your crochet hook. Next, you're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. So one and two. 
and then you're going to make your other your next pico which is chain three oh, hold on I just have a little bit of a knot right here okay so you have your chain three you're going to insert your hook into that very first chain right here yarn over and you're going to pull through everything on your crochet hook and then you're going to repeat this all the way around so again you're going to single crochet in the next two stitches chain three insert your hook into that very first chain right here yarn over and pull through everything on your crochet hook and then you're going to just repeat this all the way around your entire hot pad you do not have to do anything special or different for the corners you're just going to continue making your pico stitch around the remaining border of your hot pad and then this is what your completed hot pad looks like again you can make this in so many different colors you can match your home decor you can match your friends home decor if you're going to give this away as a gift and there's just so many possibilities of colors that you can make now again I really like this because it's a double thick hot pad and I feel like it can really be helpful in helping your surfaces not be damaged by the hot pots and pans that you would put on top of here so thank you so much for joining me today on how to make the cluster hot pad I hope you enjoyed today's, today's tutorial Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me, and as always, happy crocheting! Bye!